Hello everyone, Scruffy Golden here. Starlink portability is officially here. What does that mean? What's it gonna cost? And is portability and roaming the same thing? Until just a couple of months ago, you were restricted to using your Starlink service only at your registered service location. But in the last couple of months, however, we've enjoyed the freedom of taking our dish anywhere within the country, regardless of our registered service location. And it has been life-changing. I've wandered all over the country, I've worked while on the road, and I have not used my cellular service for internet even once. It has been incredible. Last week, Starlink sent out emails to subscribers letting them know that roaming or portability is now an official feature but will not be free for long. The email went on to say that portability is an add-on feature that enables customers to temporarily move their Starlink to new locations and receive high-speed internet anywhere there is coverage within the same continent. Once enabled, portability takes effect immediately and can be disabled at any time. Wow, okay, there are a few things to unpack there and it turns out there are a few gotchas. So let's break this thing down. Many of you have asked me about the price for this feature, so let's just start there. The email states that it will cost 25 US dollars to use portability and it goes on to say that once enabled, the feature will take effect immediately and that you can disable it at any time. So this is interesting. The immediate takeaway is that you can turn it on and off as you need it. If you use Starlink mostly at home, but you want to take it with you on a trip and you don't want to risk losing your home service location, you can avoid paying for the feature until and when you need it. The feature and thus the price are for each dish. So if you have more than one dish, you would need to enable the feature and pay $25 for each additional dish. Also, if you go to the terms of service, you will notice that the price is not prorated in any way. So regardless of when you turn the feature on or off, you will pay at least one full month of service. Turn it on at the end of the month, you will pay $25. Turn it off one day after you turn it on, again, $25. Still, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's pretty cool that you can turn this thing on and off as needed without any kind of penalty or startup fee. Now, you'll have to determine for yourself if the additional $25 is worth it. And it is a little tough when you consider that the first price increase has barely gone into effect and here we have an additional cost. I mean, just a month ago, the service cost only $99. Then the 110 just started about a week ago and now we're up to $135 if you add the portability. That can be a little hard to swallow. Um, heck, paying one third more in the space of weeks for anything is a little hard to swallow. Having said that, Starlink has been so successful for me on the road that I have not turned to my cellular data plan even once. I have a month-to-month -month cellular plan that allows me to turn it on and off as needed with a $50 initiation fee every time I turn it on. Now, Starlink roaming or portability has been so successful for my lifestyle that I have turned off that cellular service, which is saving me $150 per month. Now, I might be paying $25 more for Starlink, but I'm paying $150 less for that cell service. Now there are two things you want to be careful of if you're thinking of doing something similar. First, Starlink changes are coming so fast and furious that we really don't know what the service will look like after portability goes live. I mean, it's been fabulous so far, but that is no promise that it will be fabulous in the future as well. And I can safely turn my cellular service back on if need be, so there's no risk in turning it off. So keep that in mind and the costs in mind if you decide to rely solely on your Starlink for your internet service. Second, to enable the service, you need to have access to internet and the Starlink website. For me personally, I do not intend to enable the service and pay for it until the free roaming version is turned off. So if you are, say, in the middle of Utah, relying solely on Starlink for internet when Starlink turns off the free version, you will need to probably travel until you reach internet again in order to activate the portability. Now, not sure how many of you would find yourself in this situation, but this sort of thing has already happened to me once, so make sure you are able to get to civilization and safety if you suddenly don't have internet. Okay, so we know it's going to cost $25, but when? One of my viewers mentioned she had received a letter in the mail stating that the service would be turned on June 3rd. Now, I don't know what country she was in, and I have not received anything to this effect, but I have seen other things online that indicate this might be the case, and Starlink does seem to like giving us one month's notice for this sort of thing. So let's go with June 3rd until we hear otherwise. By the way, I will drop a video the second I notice my roaming has been turned off, so in case that's useful to you, please stay tuned. 
Now that we know what portability is going to cost, let's unpack some of the nuances and the gotchas of this service. The portability email from Starlink was fairly short, so two things in particular jumped out at me from the first read. The first was a sentence that said, if you enable portability, you could use your Starlink anywhere on the continent where there is active service. Anywhere on the continent. Now, I have not tried to take my Starlink over the US border, but many of you over the last six months have said that it didn't work when you tried, or at least that you thought it wasn't allowed. So I don't know what countries those viewers are moving into and out of, but there were enough of you for me to think this was probably true. Apparently with portability, you could take your dish up to Alaska, swing down through Canada on your way to the continental US, right on through Mexico. And service is not available in Central America at the moment, but ultimately you could continue right on down through Costa Rica and Panama. Now that would be an epic journey. And in fact, man, that would be really cool. If one of you does it, please let me know in the comments below. The second thing that jumped out at me was the sentence that said, portability enables customers to temporarily move their Starlink to new locations. Now, not the George Costanza this thing, but how long is temporary and what happens when you exceed that duration? I could not find much on how long Starlink considers temporary. I did see a note that said you would have to change your registered service address if you use your Starlink in a foreign country for more than two months, but I didn't see anything stating how long temporary would be when using it in your home country. We do know what is likely to happen the more you exceed whatever that temporary duration is though. In fact, there were several references to your quality of service being degraded the longer you stay in one location while roaming. The only way to maintain your speeds and quality of service is to use Starlink at your registered service address. Which brings us to a few gotchas. We've already pointed out the first one, which is that portability is considered a temporary service that could degrade over time the longer you exceed whatever duration Starlink sets on an area. But this degradation may not and probably won't start from the top tier service. Starlink makes it clear that the portability service is a best effort service. When you take your Starlink to a new location, the users registered and using Starlink in that area will be given priority and you will be subject to peak usage or congestion issues if there are any. And apparently the longer you stay in that location, the more your service could degrade from there. So should you use portability or just move your service address? Well, that depends on several things, I guess, including whether you can change your address to the new location in the first place. And furthermore, please note that all of the previous restrictions and constraints regarding moving your address are still in effect. So if you want to understand the details and what those are, check out one of my earlier Starlink videos. Having said that, it largely comes down to how mobile you are and how important the quality of service is to you and whether the location you want even accepts an address change. Now personally, Starlink isn't available at my house, so changing my service address every chance I get is no big deal to me since I have no danger of losing my subscription slot at home. And just a few months ago, I had to move the address every single time I wanted to use it in a new location. Lately, however, roaming has worked so well that I can't remember the last time I changed it. So when portability goes into effect, personally, I'll be balancing my internet needs with what's available, and I'll probably move my address if needed and possible. One thing is certain, however, for the best quality of service, you need to use Starlink where you have the address registered. All right, so that begs the question, is there a way to determine where Starlink is available for use? And the answer is, yeah, mostly, mostly. Starlink does have an availability map, but it's geared towards showing where you can place an order for Starlink, not necessarily where it is usable. It has been expanded slightly. For starters, it is now blue instead of green to visually indicate that new things are available. And where the old map only showed where ordering was available and where you would be placed on a wait list, there's now a coming soon section that shows where service is pending due to some kind of an approval, such as regulatory approval or government approval, and should be available soon. Only one month ago, I released a video detailing the Starlink availability map, and it's already a little bit out of date, but there's still very good information on there if you want to take a deep dive into it. So since the map is geared towards ordering, it does not show every location that would be available for portability. In other words, there are places where it's available, but it doesn't look like it on the map. So the locations on the map that show available are available for both ordering and portability. But many of the waitlist areas work perfectly well with portability, even though you can't place an order there. For instance, I was in Barberville, Kentucky, watching my son play a college baseball game just a weekend ago, 
and Starlink portability worked fantastically, even though the map shows there is a wait list for ordering. Now, my experience has been that those in the dark blue areas, which are the coming soon areas, that they don't work for ordering or portability yet. Now, I don't know if that's always the case, but so far it's been true for me. So, One of the big takeaways in all of this is that half of the trick to using Starlink on the road is what it's always been, which is just getting your hands on the equipment in the first place. Now, I have a video that details how to make this happen, and I'll put a link to it in the description below, as well as up in the corner. Now that we've detailed what portability is and how it works, let's take a look at what portability is not. In a sentence, portability is not mobility, at least not yet. Now, I have received a ton of comments from people that are excited with the videos that have been coming out lately, showing people successfully using the Starlink dish on their car or RV as they zip down the road. Now, not very long ago, the Starlink dish would actually shut down if it detected what it thought was in motion on a boat or a car. And in fact, it didn't seem to take much for that to happen. So what's going on? Why is it working now? Well, Elon Musk has dropped several comments making it clear that Starlink is working on a mobile solution. And some of this seems to indicate that Starlink is making progress on this front. So what is also clear is that this is not it, at least not yet. In the newly added portability section of the Starlink agreement, the in motion section was updated in a fairly significant way. Now, there's always been verbiage saying that in motion was prohibited, but now it's all in caps. And in fact, near as I can tell, it's the only thing in caps. And in addition to saying that in motion could void the warranty of your dish, now it's also saying that it is grounds for termination of your account. From where I'm sitting, it looks like Starlink's getting more serious about in motion use. So keep that in mind if this is something you're thinking about trying. And in case you're wondering, you do not have to wait until Starlink kills your free roaming in order to turn on portability. In fact, you can turn it on right now. By the way, if you have found the information in this video useful so far, please hit the like button so that this video can spread to more people. I would appreciate it very much. Thank you. If you're ordering your Starlink from scratch, you will be given the option to turn on portability when you place the order. And if you already have Starlink, log into the Starlink website, hit the three lines in the top right corner. From there, select My Account and select Manage Service Options in the middle. At the bottom of the box on the left-hand side, you will see a section that says Add Portability. Simply click that and press the Add Portability button in the pop-up. That's all there is to it. So, Starlink is a fabulous product that provides amazing internet service at home and now on the road, as you can tell with the train that's going behind me. <laughs> the ability to use this on the road will open up options that were not even reasonably possible even a few months ago, and I can't recommend it enough. If you want to work or experience office quality internet on the road, but Starlink is on hold where you live, check out the two videos on the screen. They will give you everything you need to get going with Starlink on the road, which will also allow you to live without compromise. And I'll see you out there.